So my printer is already quite old and the extruder and hot end combo has seen its best days. So I need to replace it. And while I'm at it, I just upgraded it to the E3D lineup. So before I can replace my old extruder and hot end, I of course need to know what I want to replace it with. To get a rough overview, I watched Thomas Salander's video about hot ends. And after that it was pretty easy choice for the E3D V6 hot end. And I as I am ordering from E3Ds anyway, I also picked up the Titan extruder. Now that the parts arrived, I knew that I had to build a mounting brackets in order to mount it to my frame. But to do that I still need my 3D printer, so I didn't disassemble the old hot end until I print this part. But in order to do that I first need to assemble the new hot end and extruder. After that I could figure out where I want to put it and how I want to mount it and then I designed the mounting bracket in OpenSCAD. The printing was quite complicated as the old hot end was leaking everywhere and there were drops of filaments everywhere on the build platform so it was a quite messy job and I had to do quite a lot of cleanup. But the part got was usable enough to the point where I can use it to print a better one. With the mounting bracket finished I could finally mount the new hot end to the printer. And next step of course is a test print. But before that I needed to calibrate the extruder. In order to do that I marked about 60mm above the extruder and then extruded 50mm and then it should be left with 10mm in the theory. I didn't have any left till the mark and so I knew that I was extruding too much. So then I could calculate how many steps per millimeters I need. In order to write it to the printer I opened Repetier Host and went to change the EEPROM settings. These are like firmware settings on the printer itself. Then I just punched in the new number right there and hit save and now it is saved to the printer. Now finally I could do a test print and this is what came out of it. As you can see it didn't quite finish as the filament got jammed in the heat break. After some research and lots of trial and error, I found out that I needed to print at a lower temperature and I needed to run the fan on the hot end at 100%, which is quite loud so I didn't want to do it, but it is necessary. And I also added a DIY oiler with just a sponge. That then resulted in good prints, as you can see. This is a business card for a different project. And you can see that it is really smooth and the text is quite sharp. This is a comparison to my old printer. The reason why this printed so well is because the layers take quite long and so there is enough time for them to cool off. When I tried to do narrower th things, the problem is that the layers are still hot when the next one goes over it, so I need a part cooling fan. And this will certainly be the next thing I do for this printer. So that's it for this video. If you liked it please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles that are linked down below that you can check out for some behind the scenes. Thanks for watching and until next time.